In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a synced toggle. A toggle can be described as a system with two different states, on and off. A synced toggle means that everyone in the instance has the same state, including leak joiners. Before starting the tutorial, verify which version of Unity and other packages you are using. This tutorial uses Unity 2019 and the VRChat SDK released on August 4th. Check the VRChat website for the current Unity version and always use the latest VRChat SDK. This tutorial will also be using Cyan Trigger version 3.2 and Cyan Emu version 3.10. Check my Patreon for the latest Cyan Trigger package. While not required, Cyan Emu is an editor script that I wrote to help test worlds in Unity directly. You can download the latest version from my GitHub or from the Prefab database. The resources used in this tutorial can also be downloaded for free on my Patreon. Check the video description for all the links mentioned here. In Cyan Triggers, Creating a toggle is different from VRChat's SDK2 methods. VRC triggers relied on the game object or component saving the current enabled state. Syncing also required explicit actions to enable or disable the object and buffering those actions. With Cyan triggers, we can handle the toggle value in the Cyan trigger itself using variables. We can also sync the value directly instead of needing to buffer actions. Before getting into networking, let's go over creating a general toggle which can be used locally. Creating a toggle in Cyan Triggers requires three things. A Boolean variable to hold the current state of the toggle, an event to toggle the value of the bool, and an event to handle when the values change to update visuals. In Unity, I have a simple scene already set up here. There's a small room with a door. This door can be toggled open and closed. To start creating our toggle, add a new cube to be used as your button. Right click, create new 3D object, cube. Reposition however you like. Let's add a new Cyan Trigger component. At the top of the Cyan Trigger, add a new bool variable. Let's call it door closed. A bool variable type can hold two values, true and false, on and off. This bool variable we use to know if the door is opened or closed. Since our door starts closed, set the value to true. Now, to create the event that modifies the value, add a new interact event. Change the interact text to toggle door. Whenever the player is close to our box here, it will highlight that it can be interacted with and show our text. Inside the interact event, we need to modify our value. We don't know the current state of it since it could be either true or false. We just want to flip its value. We can do this with an action called bool.unary negation. The name is a little odd, but this is what it's called in programming languages. Cyan triggers allows you to use constant values or variables as inputs for different actions. Set both inputs to our door closed variable. The first input into this action is the value that the operation will work on. In this case, it is the value that will be flipped. The second input for this action is the output, or where the results will be stored. This is required to be a variable. We now have a way to toggle the value, but it doesn't affect anything yet. Let's update the door visuals whenever this value is modified. Add a new onVariableChanged event. This event will automatically fire whenever the specified variable's value is changed. Select door close is the variable we want to check for changes. In this event, we need to update everything that depends on our toggle's value. Add a new game object set active action. Drag our door closed object in and select the door closed variable. It is important to use the variable here, as this will automatically update the game object's active state based on the data in the variable. One nice feature of this onChanged event is that it also provides a variable for the old value. We can use the old value to also update the door's open object. Duplicate the game object set active action. Change the door object to the open door object. And change the variable to the old value. Now, clicking the button will toggle the door open and closed. This is all we need to make a local toggle. Now, let's sync it. I will not go over all the details of networking here. Fairly Said Panda gave a good talk on VRChat networking during the VRC Prefabs TLX event. I recommend watching the talk to learn more about networking in VRChat. As a quick overview, VRChat networking has three main items, ownership, synced variables, and send custom network event. Every object in VRChat has an owner. Being the owner lets you sync variables and send values to everybody else. If you are not the owner, changing a synced variable will not update for everyone. There are two modes for syncing variables, continuous and manual. Continuous sync is used for things that change often. This can be positions of objects or constantly changing values. VRChat will automatically send this data to all clients without you doing anything. 
Manual sync is for values that don't change often, but then change on specific events. When you change the value, you must request it to be synced to other players. Manual sync is much faster than continuous sync. For almost everything, we will want to use manual sync. In Science Triggers, requesting data to be sent through manual sync can be handled automatically. Back in Unity, actually enabling sync for this toggle is simple. There are only two changes that need to happen. On the door closed variable, change the sync settings from not synced to synced. This variable will now send its data to everyone. Make sure that the sync method is set to manual with auto request, as this will auto generate the proper serialization calls behind the scenes. The second change that needs to happen is ensuring that the person changing the variable is the owner of the object. Currently, when someone interacts with the button, they update the variable locally. If they are not the owner of the object, no one else will see the data change. We need to make sure they are the owner first before setting the variable. Add a new networking set owner action in our interact event. The player input should auto set to the local player. For the second input, change it to variable and select this game object as what we are taking ownership over. Let's add a comment to make it obvious what this is doing. Right click the action and select add comment. Set the local player as the owner of this object so they can update the variable and sync it to everyone. Comments are ways for you to add information to your actions to make it easier to understand. Comments can be added to individual actions, events, and even at the top of the sign trigger itself. With the variable synced and the owner set, this toggle is now synced for all players. But what if we don't like the big button and instead want to click on the door itself? We don't need to have the interact and the toggle logic to be on the same object. We can move the logic to another object and add interacts to the door. This can be done by using custom events in the send custom event action. Custom events can be called from another cyan trigger and are great for reusing logic. First, drag the cyan trigger component from the cube to the door parent and delete the cube. On the cyan trigger, change the interact event to custom. Put the name as toggle door. When creating custom events, it is recommended to put an underscore as the first character of the event name, as this will block the event from being networked even in cases you don't intend. On the closed door object, add a new cyan trigger. Add a new interact event. Set the interact text to open door. In the interact event, add a new send custom event action. Change the target cyan trigger from variable to input and drag our door parent in. Set the event to toggle door as we named it before. Let's copy this cyan trigger and paste it on the open door object. Change the interact text from open door to now close door. Save the scene and then let's test it out. And now clicking on the door opens and closes it. I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters. If you want to see more VRChat video tutorials, prefabs, or editor tools, please consider supporting. That's all for this tutorial. If you have any questions on the content of this tutorial, let me know in the comments or join my Discord. If you want to know what other things I'm working on, follow me on Twitter. Until next time, thank you for watching.